Hey folks, Pat here from DNS. Uh, welcome to another episode of Shop Talk. I'm uh, in front of the camera today, Noah's behind the camera, uh, and we're going to talk about being comfortable on the ice. Um, everybody knows you should have uh, good bibs, a good jacket to keep yourself warm, but uh, the part, uh, parts that at least I have problems with keeping warm are my hands and my feet. So we're going to talk about some of that stuff today and um, yeah, just go through a couple different options and little tricks that uh, I like to use. So uh, one of the first things that um, I like to use, this is a trick that I learned from a bunch of old timers that I've met on the ice over the years, um, and it involves uh, bag balm. Uh, so this is a product, it's, a, uh, it's been used for, it says on the side of the tin here, since 1899, uh, and it's uh, a lot of dairy farmers like it. They put this stuff on the udders of their cattle. Uh, it comes, they sell it at, um, Basically any pharmacy you can find it. Uh, it comes in a green tin here. Um, frankly, it's uh, a little nasty, kind of kind of greasy stuff. But open the tin here, you can see in there it's um, you know just a, a lanolin-based um, salve or solution that you put on your hands. And uh, so th this is a great product for uh, you know a lot of times you get dry, cracked hands if you're wet and in the cold. Uh, so put this on at night. A lot of times I'll put it on at night before I go to bed, let it sit on your hands and it, um, it soaks in and does a really good job with cracks and splits in your, in your hands. But uh, what we're going to talk about here is a little combination that I like to use of this bag balm and then uh, rubber gloves. Uh, so these are just uh, latex rubber gloves. You can get them just about anywhere. Um, you know, maybe like 16 bucks, I think, for a pack of 100 gloves. Um, and so what I like to do is I take just a big goop of this bag balm, you know, something like that, get it, uh, get it on there and just spread her around your hands. Pretty greasy stuff, but it really is good for your skin. And uh, just load your hands up like this. Then you take a, one of your gloves, if you can get it out. You slide them on here. A little tough getting in in the gloves, but the what's nice about this uh, bag balm is that not only does it help your skin, um, you know, with the cracks and dryness, but uh, what this bag balm does is it provides uh, a little bit of a sticky element that helps these gloves form around your fingers, so you can have all the dexterity that you need um, for. Uh, you know, tying on jigs. I, I, I use these when I'm out trout fishing. I can, I've tied on tiny little flies, uh, but you can see it, you know, fits right on your finger nice and nice and tight there, and then it won't uh, come off and get loose. You can get hooks stuck in there. Uh, so the bag balm is uh, pretty essential uh, for keeping, like I said, your, your hands moist and, uh, you know, the gloves tight to your fingers. But uh, give this a shot. It keeps your hands dry, and it also... Um, you know, protects them from the wind, so it's a nice little layer there, and uh, can come in really handy. So uh, one other thing about these gloves too is um, when you know the bag balm is a good preventative uh, measure to take uh, to keep your hands moist. But um, you know, when they do get bad, I know my hands here at the shop dip and bait all day. Uh, it's dry here. I get uh, cracks, and sometimes it gets away from me a little bit. But um, so what I'll do uh, when things get really bad is actually put some bag balm on at night and put some gloves on before I go to bed. Uh, it's really great for freaking the wife out as you're standing there over the bed with rubber gloves on. You look like some kind of psycho. Um, but uh, it really does help uh, to just seal this, uh, the bag balm in. It doesn't make a mess and stuff uh, on your sheets. And uh, really, you wake up in the morning and you're, it's almost like you got new hands. So uh, that's another uh, great little tip for this glove uh, bag balm system. So when it comes to being out on the ice, you know, you got your gloves on and you're ready to go. Um, you know, these are great when it's a, you know, comfortable day in the 30s. You know, just a pair of rubber gloves keeps your hands dry and, and, and uh, the wind off just a little bit. Uh, but when it starts to get a little colder, it's nice to have uh, some other options. So what I'll do is, um, like when I'm trout fishing, I love, uh, and these are the rattiest pair of gloves you'll probably ever see, but fingerless wool gloves. Uh, you can just, you know, slide your hands in there and then you get, um, you know, ha good hand coverage um, if, the, if your gloves aren't torn up like mine are, but uh, you get good hand coverage and uh, keeps them warm and you can still get the dexterity on your fingertips. So that's, that's a great option. Um, otherwise, when it gets a little bit colder than that, you've got um, 
I like these uh, leather gloves. Get them at the hardware store. They got a uh, little fur lining in them. I, I, I really do believe that these are some of the warmest gloves made, honestly, and they're, and they're pretty cheap and uh, do a great job. And you still, still have some dexterity there with your hands. Uh, when things get bitter cold, uh, it's hard to beat a good pair of floppy mittens. Uh, you know, you got the fur lining in there and you know, that keeps all of your hand, uh, your fingers together and um, you know, great for keeping your hands warm. And you know, in, in the event you catch a fish or you need, need your hands, it's easy to just tuck it under your armpit and slip your hand out, your glove out and you're good to go. So, uh, and we sell a lot of different uh, d versions of these floppy mittens at the shop here. So yeah, it's um, a lot of great options to, for different degrees of coldness that'll keep your hands warm. So on the theme of uh, keeping your hands warm, we're just going to continue on here. I still have my rubber gloves on, but um, hand warmers are another uh, great option uh, for staying comfortable on the ice. So um, obviously everybody's familiar with the old hot hands. Of course, we sell these here at the shop and they're a great option. They work, uh, you know, 10 hours of heat, it says here on the package. And uh, it's a great option, uh, disposable. Uh, which uh, is a good thing, but if you're looking for something that's a little more of a permanent option, there are some other things out there. Um, these are a, um, a liquid uh, hand warmer. It, they, they, it's a liquid inside this bag here. I keep them in a uh, eye, old eyeglasses case uh, so that they don't get bumped around because inside of these, you'll see there's this little metal disc. And what you do is you take this disc and you bend it get a little pop there you can see that um, it's actually pretty cool to watch um, the whatever material this is in here <coughs> start there's a, some kind of chemical reaction that creates heat and these things will start to firm up and you can see that uh, you know expanding throughout the the package here and so uh, and then this is warm to the touch so these are good hand warmer options uh, and what you do is um, these will last two three hours like this um, and then at the end of the day, when, when you're done with them, take them home and you just put them in a boiling pot of water for like 10 minutes and this liquid comes back. So then they're looking like this again, you know, with the liquid in there. And, uh, but like I said, I like to keep them in a glasses case uh, because if you bump them around too much <clears throat> or they're, they're in the bottom of your bucket or something, they can get set off and then, then you're without hand warmers out there on the ice. So uh, these are a good option for uh, reusable, uh, maybe a little more sustainable um, solution to warming your hands. Uh, the other option uh, that I actually just uh, came across recently, a tip from a customer, was um, these Okupa uh, hand warmers. So they're, this is a, a digital hand, or electric hand warmer. So they have these um, great, uh, it, it's a little flap here underneath, exposes a USB port that you can uh, plug in to charge them. And they are connected with two magnets. Uh, and then it's just a simple, simple little power button here. Just hold the power button down until the red lights come on. Uh, and then there's actually uh, four different settings. I don't know if you can see on the little red dots, but that's the lowest setting and then all the way up to the highest setting. And um, what it says on the package is at the highest setting, these will last three hours. At the lowest setting, they'll last 16 hours. So, um, and there's a little battery, uh, the blue dots mean uh, how much battery is in them. But uh, yeah, on this low setting, I like to just, uh, you know, they fit nice in your hands and then you can just tuck them, tuck them in your pockets and warm your hands up, keep them uh, warm that way. And it's a great alternative. And again, at the end of the day, just take them home and plug them in and uh, they're ready for the next time you're out. So the uh, Okupa hand warmer product is, uh, it's a great little product. Uh, I hope uh, to be carrying these at the store sometime soon, just uh, working out uh, contacting the company on these. So. It's a great option. So the other part of your body that's always getting cold, at least for me, out on the ice is your feet. Um, so it's important to try to keep your feet warm out there. Uh, of course, you want to have a good pair of warm boots. Uh, these are actually, uh, they call them Mickey Mouse boots. Uh, these are actually military issue boots that um, I got off eBay. Uh, I think um, the deal is where, you know, you get uh, some uh, military folks that are stationed in a place like Alaska or something and they, they, they issue these boots for folks that are standing out in the cold elements. Uh, they're really great for keeping your feet warm and then, but those folks might move back to Texas and then they got these boots that they're never going to use so they'll sell them on eBay. So a lot of times you can find them uh, for a pretty good deal. I've also seen them uh, pretty high priced out there. So, you know, just look around. Uh, but they're extremely warm boots. Uh, they're pretty heavy, but uh, they do keep you warm. Of course, I got uh, 
some uh, um, creepers on the bottom here that, uh, you know, I, I just leave those on all year because uh, it's, it's always nice to be stable on the ice. But uh, combine that with a good pair of wool gloves. Sorry if these are a little ratty, but these are mine. Uh, I like these, uh, Genius Wool or something it's called. But any, any good pair of wool socks should do you just fine. Uh, and, you know, pretty much everybody knows that. It's obvious to have uh, wool socks and, and good boots. But uh, another little trick is carpet. So when you're out on the ice and um, say you're in a shack and, you know, the shack is warm, you got your heater on, heat rises. So that uh, hot air is going up, but your feet down in the bottom can still get pretty cold. So I like to take a piece of carpet along. Uh, this one uh, is a long strip that uh, you can fold up if it's just you out there. But also, uh, you know, I, I got it folded up here so you can extend it out if you're, you know, fishing with a buddy or something. You can, uh, you know, share the warmth, I guess. Uh, but really, um, just this little bit of protection against the ice can really make a world of difference out there. So um, a piece of carpet along with you uh, can really help. I, I've seen other folks use, uh, you know, like a tip-up hole cover or uh, you know, like a foam kneeling pad, uh, which also, you know, if you're, if you're pan fishing and, and, and kneeling down, my knees can't take it personally, but um, you know, a little foam pad also helps. So um, keeping your feet off the ice uh, with something as simple as a ratty old piece of carpet can, be, uh, can make a world of difference. So another important part of being out on the ice is keeping your head warm. Um, there, obviously there's a lot of options out there uh, for headwear, but uh, I'm just going to tell you what I like to use. I'm a big fan of the uh, Stormy Cromer hats. Um, I've been wearing one for probably 20 years. Uh, these hats were invented by a guy, uh, st his name was something, Stormy was his nickname, Cromer was his last name. He was a baseball star who wound up becoming a uh, train engineer up in the UP and his um, his ears were getting cold, so he asked his wife to make him a hat that kept his ears warm. So uh, he, they have a wool hat here, these are all wool, and then uh, they got these little flaps on the side. You can just pull down uh, when it gets a little chillier and the wind's blowing, and uh, you'd be surprised how much just tucking your ear, uh, the tops of your ears in, uh, can really make a big difference in keeping your, your head warm. But uh, when things get really cold, I like to pair that uh, with a stocking cap. So, uh, of course, we have very stylish uh, DNS hats here at the shop. Uh, stop in and grab one, but really any stocking cap will work. But I'll just throw one of these over the top, pull it down nice and, nice and low on my neck, keeps the back of your neck warm, kind of tucks the rest of your ears in, and uh, really can do a, a one-two punch on keeping your head warm. So, uh, yeah, it's just what I like to do, and, uh, yeah, hope it works for you. So yeah, that's it for another episode of Shop Talk. Just wanted to go over a couple things that I like to do to help uh, keep me warm on the ice and I hope they work out for you. Thanks for tuning in. So. <laughs> can we just do the, this part over? We can just keep, no, just keep going. Okay. I can just cut all that out. Okay. I don't know why this thing isn't opening. Today we're gonna talk about being comfortable on the ice. Uh, different things you can do to, um, you know, mostly, let's just start over. <laughs> And also, do not hesitate to be like, hey man, uh, let's just do this part over, or sure. maybe try this again with, sure, um, you know.